enough to claim the title World's Best. And it's all next on Speed World. of the FIA World Rally Championship. It's the 16th Rally Argentina, our only visit to the Americas. And as we get ready for today's event, let's start off by taking a look at this year's Drivers' Championship points. Tommy Mackinnon holds an eight-point lead over Carlos Sainz. Defending champion Colin McRae is 13 points back in third. Then Piero Liotti and Kenneth Erickson round out the top five. In South America, rallying is almost a religion, and thousands arrive early before dawn to stake out prime viewing spots. Argentina sits near the tip of South America on the coast of the South Atlantic. 80 cars will start northwest of the capital of Buenos Aires in Cordoba. Leg one has 13 stages covering 199 kilometers, 124 miles. This is a tough gravel road rally, and it's still winter here in July. Very chilly temperatures. 8.15 a.m. start, and thousands of eager fans are lining the roads. First off, defending World Rally Champion, Colin McRae in his Subaru, speeding through the human corridor. Colin, fresh off his first win of the year in Greece, was the fastest in the very first stage, and he was the early leader. Carlos Sainz, second in the points, one win this year at Indonesia, currently in second place behind McRae as we go on board. My Spanish isn't too good, but I'd be shouting at those people to get out of the way. Now, as we move out into the countryside a bit, here's current third place car of Tommy Mackinnon from Finland and our current points leader. Now, this is Tommy's first rally Argentina, but then again, it was also his first safari rally in Kenya, and he won that one. Now, Mackinac's teammate in Argentina was Richard Burns from Great Britain, who has two DNFs this season, and to make matters worse, Burns has a very bad head cold. In fact, he would later candidly admit the cold did affect his driving. Burns is also the Asia-Pacific entry for Team Mitsubishi, so after two bad starts this year, Burns was feeling some heat to do well today. And as you take a look at this section of the race course, back and forth, can you imagine having a head cold and having to make all these turns? A left-hander, a right-hander, all of them 180 degrees? Now, from the rest of the Subaru team, the apparent star of the season has been Italian Piero Liatti who has a fifth, a second, and a fourth place finish to his credit this year, and he's currently fourth in the points coming in. Also in a Subaru, Kenneth Erickson of Sweden, who had a couple of flats that may have cost him the victory in Greece, was looking for a great showing here to move up from fifth place in the points. Now, Toyota had two cars in the top 10 early on. This is Rui Madeira. Plus, there was 21-year-old Paraguayan Marco Galante, who looked so good in Kenya, but later crashed as we go on board with Galante. 200, baja, y derecha, tres por adentro, y izquierda larga, tres y abre. By stage five, it was still Colin McRae leading with signs and packing and chasing. But just like the final day of the Indonesia rally, where he crashed when he had a comfortable lead, off camera, McRae clips a bank and rolls the Subaru. He drove for a short distance before the motor finally gave out and the race was over for Colin McRae. David, we've just seen Colin walk in. He's obviously out. Can you now tell us what's happened? Yeah, I don't know the exact details, but uh, obviously it's an accident. It's just, um, you know, that speed, you take a few risks and you know, this time, one too many. What's broken on the car? Anything to prevent him coming out? Um, initially, he thought he'd got away with it, but uh, it looks like the, the bonnet had got pushed down at the front and it's damaged the cam belt. So the engine started, he started to drive, but then it stopped within a few yards. With the defending champion out of the race, Carlos Sainz inherits the lead with Mackinnon, Erickson, Liotti, and Burns in the top five. Today's Speed World event is being brought to you by Subaru, makers of a complete line of full-time all-wheel drive vehicles. Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. 
Tired of dodging flying chips and debris when you strip old paint? And what a mess! Introducing the Multi-Stripper, the only stripper with the patented debris control system. Now turn any drill into a stripping powerhouse. Watch as thousands and thousands of fingers per minute literally chew up paint, erasing crusty old layers in no time without the mess. Stop, there's a screw! No problem. The Multi-Stripper flies by without a hitch. The Multi-Stripper's solid steel fingers are powerful enough to erase thick, ugly rust in seconds, yet gentle enough to remove baked-on paint from this delicate window. Let's face it, stripping paint the old-fashioned way is hard, and those chemicals always leave a toxic mess. Watch the Multi-Stripper work on this expensive fine furniture without damaging the valuable wood underneath. Restore old lawn furniture, a burnt-out barbecue. It chews up caked on grass from under your lawnmower. It's perfect for all your refinishing jobs. Door frames, siding, louvers, or baseboards. Nothing strips paint better than the Multi-Stripper. And during this TV-only offer, you can get the Multi-Stripper with the incredible debris control system for just $19.95. But before you order, listen to this. You'll also get the famous Mighty Disc that cuts like a blade and grinds like a wheel free. It slices through tile like butter. It won't chip or crack your work, always leaving a smooth edge. The Mighty Disc buzzes through pipe of any type. Rusty bolts and metal floor trim. It's ideal for tool sharpening. And it's yours free when you order the Multi Stripper for just $19.95. That's two amazing tools for one low price of $19.95. Call now. For fastest delivery, credit card customers call 1-800-381-9933 to order the Multi Stripper for just $19.95 and receive the Mighty Disc free. Or send check or money order to this address. This is an exclusive TV offer, so call 1-800-381-9933. That's 1-800-381-9933 now. Marty Reed back with you at the 16th Rally Argentina. It's round five of the FIA World Rally Championship, and Carlos Sainz would not hold on to the lead very long. He had a terrible afternoon. Watch the dashboard right up at the top. A piece of equipment's going to fall right out into his lap. Navigator Louis Moya has to hold on to it for the rest of the stage. Then things got worse. Signs broke an output shaft in the front axle. Now, this is a part considered normally so reliable, it's not even carried in the service van. Now, without fixing it, would have left signs with only three-wheel drive for the rest of the five stages today. So the team decided to swap the broken part from Sainz's car with a unbroken part from teammate Bruno Thierry's car. Now, Thierry would then have to drive with three-wheel drive until the next service stop when a part could be dug up for him. Bruno wasn't exactly thrilled with the whole idea, but team orders are team orders. As a angry Carlos Sainz pulled out, little did he know his mechanical problems were far from over, and he handed the lead to Tommy Mackinac. Later on in the day, Thierry was having problems trying to pitch his escort around with only three wheels biting, and he dropped to about six minutes, 30 seconds behind race leader Mackinac, but he would somehow manage to finish the day in eighth place. Now, that's not bad as you watch as we go on board with Thierry and see how much trouble he had with the loss of traction and handling. At the final service stop of the day, the Ford team could finally change the broken output shaft in Thierry's car. Bruno knew he had to be a team player. Carlos is fighting for the, for the World Championship, and in this place, it was not uh, this, uh, this, this part. And it was normal for me for me to give him this uh, this part. This was come. I had to understand that. But Sainz had even more mechanical problems. We did the last four stages without power steering, so it was not not very good day. First of all, it's very painful for the arms, <laughs> and then you can go off the road very easily. Team Subaru still getting over the loss of McRae so early in the race, but Piero Liotti was doing his best to make up for it, currently running in third place, one minute, 12 seconds behind the front runner. And Kenneth Erickson was having a good day in second place, 26 seconds behind the leader. His only problem, the low winner son, as we go on board with Erickson. Watch as he struggles with a glare. <laughs>
race leader Tommy McKinnon had to feel somewhat comfortable with the crash of McRae and the mechanical woes of signs that left him almost two minutes, 30 seconds behind. First, we'll watch McKinnon on board, then we'll listen to director of Mitsubishi Racing, Andrew Cowan. Been very good, you know, Tommy's been very relaxed. He's been up there at the front just watching what other people were doing and, uh, you know, he's come back to the end of this leg in a good position. You're changing everything here tonight. This is precaution, or with a suspension, do you think you must change it? Yeah, it's just precaution, because tomorrow tomorrow is a uh, very long day as well, and now we have to change uh, all the transmission and everything, and then for the final day, we will think about maybe we can keep the same things. So as we take a look at the leaderboard after leg one, it's a great battle. Mackinnon in front of Kenneth Erickson by 26 seconds, Piero Lahadi, Carlos Sainz and Richard Burns round out the top five. Now, as you look at position six through 10, we've given you some hint from the onboard cameras how these rally drivers manage these courses at such fast speeds with the help of the navigator's constant stream of information based on the notes that they've taken from only three chances to pre-run the course. But they have some extra help. Manufacturer's road closing car, what does this mean? It's generally um, reporting on the condition of the road just prior to the drivers going across the stages. So you, in effect, amend his notes? Uh, yeah, we've got sort of carte blanche to do what we want with the notes. We can also change the, the angle that he describes the corner as, as well, if we feel it's necessary. We'll add to the notes, we'll say if a corner is slippery, we will say if there's a rock being dragged onto the road. Um, as I say, it's a safety thing, but it can also en uh, enhance his speed a little bit as well. Last right over crest, Titans 30. Fast left minus opens 100. There's definitely going to be a car on the inside of that one. On the fast right? Yeah. What's it say? Fast right over crest, Titans. Well, you put car after Titans. But don't cut, car. 50, fast right over Grace Titans, don't cut. There's a car on the inside. 30, fast left, minus. Opens. With the wreck, is becoming shorter now. We sometimes put a little note in to check a corner if, if we're not happy after our three passes or whatever um, and give them a bit of a clue as to exactly which part of the corner we want checked. And quite often that, that will be changed. 40 fast right over crest. There's a ditch out on there, is there? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, there's not, but I mean, it was. Do you want to put that on? Do you? Yeah. An extremely competent driver, and he knows exactly what he's looking for. He takes a lot of care in, in knowing about all the tyres that are available and recommending various tyres as well. And he provides information not just for me, but uh, for the team engineers as well. So there you have it, and when we come back, we'll start leg two and see if Mackinnon and navigator Seppo Haryana can win their third rally of the year. Here it is, the no-holds-barred world of military aviation, the way you'd expect with the Challenge of Flight 97. More close calls, more true stories, more incredible footage, exclusively here, not sold in store. See what works and what doesn't, with all the facts, all the information, all the details. Why low and slow over a carrier deck? Wheels up with nowhere to go. Missiles on target, bombs gone wild. See the triumphs, the tragedies, and the final seconds when all that's left is the ejection seat. Call now and join tens of thousands who own a series unlike any you've ever seen before. The Challenge of Flight 97. Own it, enjoy it, do it now. Order the Challenge of Flight preview for only $5 and receive a free pair of aviator sunglasses. Other tapes will follow about every four weeks. You may cancel at any time or return any tape for a full refund. Call 1-800-528-3223. That's 1-800-528-3223. Well, we do commercials from time to time, and frankly, we're pretty good at it. I love the chicken. I love the donuts. I love Margie's all-you-can-eat house of chicken and donuts. Mm -mm. People trust us. Have you ever been injured? Well, the law firm of Stiker and Cronin want to turn your whiplash into hard catch. America's best love sports melodies. Let's go, Rangers! Push her back, push her back, way back. No one sings like Oberman. Darryl. Bottom line, you know, we move merchandise. Well, this fan certainly knows how to rough it through a rally. This South American tailgating? Bet you can almost smell that at home, but don't ask me what it is. I couldn't tell you. 
Day two consists of 10 stages heading north from Cordoba, covering 200 kilometers. That's about 124 miles in a nine-hour day. It includes a special stage at Jesus Maria, similar to the former Mickey Thompson Stadium event. Now race leader Tommy Mackinnon started day two with a 26-second lead over Kenneth Erickson, but Mackinnon did not play it safe. He set the fastest times on two out of the first three stages on day two. Let's go on board with Mackinnon and his navigator Seppo Haryani talks him through the race course. Vasen heti pitkä oikein, eri tiukka. Heti lyhyt vasen nopee plus. Nelkyttä vasen ja piron pitkä oikein, eri tiukka. But trouble was just around the next corner, literally. Mackinnon cuts the corner too tight and gets stuck in the turn. He loses about 15 seconds. Now that opened the door ever so slightly for second place Kenneth Erickson, who now trailed Mackinnon by only 11 seconds. But Erickson soon had his own problems, namely a faltering center differential on his Subaru, and he started to lose time. Piero Leotti in third place was having a good run, except for the blinding dust being kicked up by all the cars and Liotti started to lose time as well. Only Mackinnon leading, and the first car on the course had the clear visibility, and Erickson talked about his troubles. Tommy has been very fast today, but on, on our screen now, on the computer screen, showing that uh, maybe center diff is not working as it should do, but uh, they try to change some welding now, and, and hopefully it will be better, because it, it feels a little bit unpredictable, the car, or, Maybe I cut the tires too much, but um, I hope we can, we, can, we can sort it out now, so we will try. Those dripping fluids are trouble for Piero Liotti. They're dripping out of his third place machine at the service stop. Now he had serious problems that seem to be self-inflicted. On the last stage, we were just flying on a jump, but flying like ever, ever in my life before. And when we were landing, we were just going up, 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 and suddenly the car starts to go with the front through the ground. I mean, I think we made a hole when we were landing. <laughs> and of course, I mean, we have broken everything. Any damage to the transmission? Uh, I mean, we, were, uh, we didn't get first, second and third gear, actually. But uh, maybe it's not the problem of the gearbox, but all, the whole engine has moved. So, I don't know. How much time do you have left? Five minutes. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Liotti and Pons left the service area with no time penalty. Now, you are penalized one minute of race time for every one minute you are late leaving the service area. The crew did heroic work restoring the first and second gears, but no reverse. Liotti had to be thinking to himself, do not spin this car. The tide may have been turning for Carlos Sainz. Now, he took advantage of Liotti's motor problems and claimed third place, moving Liotti to fourth. After Mackinnon had fast times on the first two stages, it was Sainz who was quickest on four of the morning's next stages. Had it not been for those early problems, Sainz may have been right there with Mackinnon and challenging for his second win of the year. And as we take a look at the leaderboard, this is the band just out as Jesus Maria, that special stage. Stay with us. It's coming up next. Ever notice rallies are always in some place like Thailand or Beijing? And where the heck is Catalonia anyhow? Subaru knows there are extreme driving conditions right here in the good old US of A. That's why we put full-time all-wheel drive on all our cars, not unlike the kind that helped us win two World Rally Manufacturers Championships. World-class traction and control, right in your own backyard. Hey, why should Catalonia have all the fun? Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive.
Marty Reed back with you at the 16th Rally Argentina in the Super Special Final Stage at Jesus Maria. Allows two cars to run the course at the same time. Now, this is the sixth place Toyota of Gilberto Pianzola. And Richard Burns in the Mitsubishi Lancer was in fourth place, speeding right underneath him, still struggling with that very bad head goal. Bruno Thierry in a Ford Escort was only one second slower than teammate Carlos Sainz in this stage. He clawed his way up to fifth place. While Sainz was laying claim as the stage winner, Rui Madera in the Toyota put on a nice show here. He was in seventh place. He was just two seconds slower than Sainz in this stage. Ninth place, well, that would belong to Ford driver Patrick Bernardini. And the Mitsubishi of Uwe Nittel was 10th overall and the showroom class leader. Taking a look at the leaderboard now after leg two, Tommy Mackinnon, 55 seconds in front of Kenneth Erickson, a minute 37 ahead of Carlos Sainz. Then Richard Burns is six minutes, nine seconds back with Bruno Thierry, 7.23 behind the leader. As you take a look at position six through 10, we now get ready for the final day of racing here at the 16th Rally Argentina. Now, there would only be five stages in the final day of racing. It covers 130 kilometers. That's about 81 miles. But while it may be one of the shorter routes, one of the most controversial events of the race was about to unfold. Tommy McEnany took the lead of 55 seconds over Erickson and stretched it. He was 10 seconds quicker on the very first stage, the longest of the day at 31 miles, and it turned out to be the most controversial. We go on board with McEnany and watch as he is supposed to make a left-hand turn here, but it appears to be blocked, forcing him to go to the right. That left was part of the pre-run course. Next up was Kenneth Erickson, and we're gonna stop the tape so you can see the makeshift blockade that the spectators have made, but Erickson drives through. Now, when Carlos Sainz approaches, you can see the blockade is back, and more people are now pointing him to go right down the wrong road. Now from above with Richard Burns, and we're gonna stop the tape so you can see the blockade and the people redirecting race traffic down the longer route. At the next service stop, the teams debated the controversy, much like the similar incident we had back in Greece where the stage was eventually canceled because of the fans barricading the road. What did you do? You went around? Round, round, of course, because it's me too. This junction was blocked, so we had to go this way to join route here and what sort of distance are we talking about i would say roughly about three four hundred meters as this is 150 meters you're actually leaving the main road and you go off to a small track and it was quite difficult to find it during the recce but this is definitely correct uh, route and when we came this morning it was blocked but since we had it in the nose we just went over the, the the blocking of the road but obviously tommy must have done the long route around it so um, we had this problem already once in in greece and i think they have nothing to do by cancel the stage and my view is that i risk my life i try to be professional maybe i'm not the best but i try to be professional and the organizers this year they are proving that they are not professionals they're just amateurs they're just pure amateurs and then we risk for what for what are we risking this we do all this investment for what if it's not run by professionals, he better not to do it. It's as simple as that. Well, I don't think Louis is going to get an invitation to this year's Christmas party, but we'll see how race officials sort this one out. Here's the leaderboard at the 16th Rally Argentina. Good eye, Uncle. Need a lift? Nice car, kid. It's me Subaru Amp X4. Not a route back. Same old wheel drive traction as yours. Got a gas mileage than the Cherokee Sport. That's fine, but can she? Out corner RAV4? No problem. Smart boy. Must run in the family. Outback Sport. The newest Outback from Subaru. I'm home! Come along on an all-new Griswold vacation. Can you believe they used to test H-bombs on this piece of property? Don't you worry about radiation. Hold down! Chicken's almost ready. When the torch is passed to a new generation. Oh, Ten years of tap dancing lessons and this is how you repay me? Somebody's gonna get burned. Oh, Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Randy Quaid, Vegas Vacation. Rated PG, now playing at a theater near you. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a 
With the spider-like traction of all-wheel drive, the new Subaru 2.5 GT can take you places those European sports sedans simply can't. Mere mortals. Before the flag drops, tune in for up-to-the-minute pre-race news and interviews. We'll take you inside the Oval with a special RPM Today at 11, followed by NASCAR Today. Daytona 500, Inside the Oval, Sunday at 11 on ESPN2. Today's Speed World event is being brought to you by Subaru, makers of a complete line of full-time all-wheel drive vehicles. Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. Marty Reed back with you at the 16th Rally Argentina, and race officials did decide to cancel that previous stage. So Tommy McInerney led Kenneth Erickson and Carlos Sainz, but on board with Erickson in second, he gets a flat tire, and they have to pull over to change it. Sainz is charging from behind. Erickson would lose about four minutes, and now we're on board with Sainz, and he's going to fly by Erickson. Then there was Bruno Thierry. He reached the finish line in fifth place with his Ford, and that is great work considering his early problems. Fourth was Richard Burns in his Mitsubishi, and still suffering with that head cold, he probably was glad as anyone to reach the checkered flag. Plus, he had now completed more miles of this race than he had in the two previous races combined. While Ford and Subaru had problems, the two Mitsubishis were running like bullets. Kenneth Erickson crossed the line in third place and had once again seen a flat tire drop him a position in the final results for two consecutive races. <laughs> Carlos Sainz, after a trouble-plagued race, brought the Ford Escort home in second place, only one minute and 35 seconds behind our winner, and you get an idea what the view is from both ends of the track. Tommy McInan, who led from the middle of day one and never looked back, won his third rally of the year, and we go on board as McInan and Haryana finish the race and celebrate. Well done. And it certainly was well done here at the Rally Argentina. Tommy McEnan by 1 minute 35 seconds over Carlos Sainz. Kenneth Erickson on 439 behind the winner. Richard Burns and Bruno Thierry round out the top five. And as we look at position six through ten, we head for victory lane. And does Tommy McEnan think he can win the championship? Or will Sainz have something to say about it? Are you quite confident you can win? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I have to say yes, because uh, next event is uh, Thousand Lakes and then Australia as well. It's, it's, it, it, it should be very good for us and uh, I think Mackinac will be favorite, but I'm a little bit more confident now. Now we are waiting a little bit for uh, an evolution in the engine. And I think when this is coming, it's going to be much better for us. Taking a look at the FIA World Rally Drivers' Championship, Tommy Mackinnon stretches his lead over Carlos Sainz to 13. Kenneth Erickson makes the big jump from fifth to third. Colin McRae and Piero Liotti each drop one position. Checking the Manufacturers' Championship, Subaru checks in with 216 points. Mitsubishi with 194. Ford in third place with 175. Our next event, round six, we go back north to Finland and the picturesque Thousand Lakes Rally. It's home of pre-race favorite Tommy McEnany. He could notch his fourth win of the year. We hope you'll join us for that. The celebration now begins in the Cordoba Football Stadium here in Argentina. I'm Marty Reed. So long for now. almost anything with a motor and they're affordable call now for a free k and brochure got a lot of miles engine restore is here to make you feel like new
engine restorer will add compression and give you more power. Put the boogie back in your car with engine restorer and lubricant.